disclaimer, they're fictional characters, so they're not gonna always behave consistently to a personality type because they're fictional and, you know, the author probably didn't intend to write them as any one particular personality type, which will make it like even more difficult or impossible to identify. But fortunately, a lot of the characters on Game of Thrones are archetypal and a lot of the personality archetypes do fit in with MBTI. And for that reason, I think I can do a video about this. Okay, hey guys! Uh, welcome to the INFP Corner. Today, I thought I would do like a fun hypothetical topic. You know, any is fun. Any is a lot of fun and I love Game of Thrones. <sighs> okay, I think I'm gonna start with someone really obvious who is Marjorie. <laughs> She's like a very, very obvious ENFJ and actually everybody else agrees with that as well, I think think for the most part. Some people think she's INFJ, but okay, anyway, so how I arrived at this typing is because her FE is super obvious. For example, she's really good at using emotionality for show. For example, like she went to that destitute village and she comforted the little girl. Um, she made like this big display of her altruism in like not caring that she's walking through the mud in her dress and I think she also like donated things to the village. Um, also, she, there was that scene where she like led Joffrey's hands and they, they made a big speech and everyone was cheering. So all of that is like very FE, it's very motivational, um, emotionally motivational. And she's doing all of this towards like this NI in goal, right? To be clean, to have power and like to have sustained power, like that's very important. I think Marjorie is one of the characters that has an, or had, I'm sorry, <laughs> that had like an end goal in mind. Um, unlike a lot of characters, for example, like Theon, he had no, <laughs> he had like no projection of the end goal. Okay, so why ENFJ? Uh, the other scene I wanted to bring up was like definitely that scene where Joffrey like wanted to kill her or something with this crossbow and she I guess her SE immediately saw that situation and her FE immediately like gauged that situation so she was able to react in the moment um, and come to his emotional register and then bring him into her emotional register so that is like amazing S-E-F-E -E loop dynamic going on. Like, if I was in that situation, I would be dead. 100% I would totally be dead. So I don't think like an INFJ with repressed S-E could necessarily react that quickly and that well in the Joffrey Crossbow situation. The other thing is that she's not really hard and fast with her values. She's more like flexible. She's gonna use um, emotions and morality for some sort of end um, in eye goal rather than like staying very firm and rigid in her beliefs. Uh, yeah, so her interaction with the sparrow, I think that's his name. Yeah, so her interaction and kind of like shifting back and forth with the sparrow was a good example of that. She's like, okay, let me just pretend to agree with him for now in order to like win in the end. So that's very like F-E and I. Also, I think like Sansa is an F-E user, but she's probably like an ISFJ, so like she uses F-E second, whereas Marjorie would use, if she's like an ENFJ, she would use F-E first. And I definitely think that Marjorie out FE's Sansa because you know there was a scene where for whatever reason Marjorie was trying to like strike up some sort of alliance with Sansa and she talks to her about like marriage and like going to bed with whoever <laughs> and um, yeah they 
she's able to like strike an instant bond with Sansa and Sansa like at that moment she really like takes a liking to Marjorie which was Marjorie's intention all along so that's like very dominant Effie. Okay so now I'm gonna take a risk and talk about her polar opposite so like I think in socionomics, it's called the contrary, uh, where all of the functions are the same, but the directionality is different. So the contrary of the ENFJ would be the INFP. And I think, I mean, there's probably like more than one INFP, but I think the major one is Daenerys. <laughs> I said this was risky because I'm pretty sure like 70% of people think that she's INFJ and only like 30% of people agree with me that she's INFP. But for me, it's just freaking mind boggling that she would be INFJ because she is totally not an introverted version of um, Marjorie, she's like the polar opposite. I think the people who think that she's INFJ, maybe they're conflating vision with desire. To me, she doesn't really have vision. Uh, she just has this very, very strong desire. She has this desire that's value-based. She's like, okay, I deserve the throne. And that's kind of SI too, by the way. So like FI, SI. SI is like, I deserve the throne because of my lineage. And FI is like, okay, that's my value. I need to get that. She's doing quite well, despite progressing very slowly, to be honest. But like, I mean, that's part of the show is to drag things out. But she's progressing well because she's getting a lot of help from everyone. Like she's, the people who are doing the strategizing are the people that she meets along the way who believes in her cause. And like the INFP being idealistic, um, and kind of like innocent and helpless in a way, which is how she starts off, right? Um, that combination, idealism and vulnerability, it can really evoke a lot of help, especially help from people like, shoot, I don't remember the name of her protector, but like that guy. <laughs> so that picture of that guy. Honestly, if you think of an INTJ, like little finger, <laughs> they know... They see life as like a game of chess and they know all the moves because the NI sees everything linearly uh, and they, they see all the moves. So they want something and they know how to navigate the world to get it. So Daenerys, she totally does not have that. Like people, other people like her and they're helping her navigate the world. Like she, all she has is this burning desire, which is very FI. And she has no clue how to get there. So other people are telling her, okay, you need to sail across the sea. Other people are telling her like, okay, maybe like you need to buy some boats. And other people are saying, yeah, army. So maybe like get this army. So she's not really like envisioning any of the steps. She's just having this desire. Maybe even more importantly, I see her like extremely in immature uses of TE, which I really relate to. Um, so TE is all about efficiency and sometimes power and an immature use of TE is like this very strong bombastic display of power which I think she obviously displays that when um, she decides to like put all the slave owners heads on spikes. Um, I think a bunch of people advised her not to do that or to strike a middle ground which would be more like FE. Or even like a more reasonable use of TE, like maybe an INTJ with like a normal TE would be like, oh, yeah, like ultimately I want things to go smoothly. So maybe I shouldn't do something that's so crazy, that's going to be so disruptive. But she's like, no, my values are like slavery is bad. So let's kill all the slave owners. And it was just like the super immature use of TE, which I can see from an ISFP or an I INFP. Honestly, I'm still confused as to why like so many people think she's INFJ. I mean, I would sooner believe that she's ISFP than INFJ. Just like look at that time that she was like, I guess, younger towards the beginning of the show when she was gonna be with like Cal Drogo for the first time. Like if you have auxiliary FE, 
as an INFJ does, you would probably figure it out. But look, she had to learn it in such an SI way. She had to have this, um, I don't remember her name either, but like one of the maids, I guess, chambermaids, to teach her how to do it with him. I feel like that's something that Effie and I would just know intuitively. Oh yeah, right. So, okay, remember during the explosion is that a spoiler ah it's a spoiler i'm sorry yeah so during the big disaster at the end of the last season um no one really knew what was going on but marjorie intuitively knew that something was wrong it hit her at a very like guttural level in that very like in eye way uh daenerys has like none of that she, she has like no and i realizations which i relate to because i i definitely i'm jealous of people who have that and i eureka moment because i just i don't have that actually now that i think about it not that this was intentional because this is definitely not intentional but i feel like the dragons are a personification of her violent repressed te like do you realize that she like, she could probably, like, fly over with the dragons now, right? But she only ever uses the dragons. Like, they're usually locked up. And she only usually uses the dragons when there's a big crisis, which is, like, kind of a mirror to the IXFP, like, how they use their tea. Also, like, if Daenerys was FE, like, Marjorie, she would be probably, like, better at talking to people. <laughs> I mean... Uh, when like she's convincing people to like follow her cause, it's really not FE at all. She usually appeals to people in an idealistic sense via FI or in a logical sense via TE. So it's not really like in this inspirational, emotive sense. So she has like very little room for sympathy for other people or empathy for other people when her values, when it's not in alignment with her values. I think there was a scene when a slave owner came and implored to her and his case was kind of understandable like he's like oh it's just tradition like you should probably let it go and uh, i feel like an fe person would probably be affected by the emotions that are happening right in front of them but she was so black and white like si black and white like no all slavery is bad, like, <laughs> F you, like, boom. Um, yeah, so to me, that was definitely, like, dominant FI. Okay, so I talked about ENFJ, INFP in this video. I think it's gonna get, like, really long, so let me just give, I guess, another example of INFP and ENFJ, like, the negative uh, portrayals of them, because I feel like Marjorie and Daenerys are very popular characters, so I don't want people to be like, oh yeah, feelers are awesome. So let's go in with, like, Samuel. Um, honestly, I haven't been paying so much attention to his part of the storyline, but, like, everyone thinks he's INFP. I don't really see, like, why like i don't really see why he would be infp but i don't see why he can't be infp either so i'm like okay whatever like i guess he reads a lot and he's not very active so okay negative portrayal of infp they're bad at sports <laughs> um i guess because they're so in their heads right he's not quick to react to the external environment he's also kind of got this like romantic sense to him and like he wants stuff but he doesn't really know how to get it like he wants to keep his girl safe but he, he kind of like doesn't really have much of a plan um so i think those could all be like negative infp traits okay this is kind of short because i really don't remember that much about sam enfj though i have a very good negative example of enfj who is melisandre Okay, so the red lady, she's pretty obviously ENFJ. Um, I don't know if she was like INFJ or ENFJ, but then I think she has like a good amount of SE. I think she like encounters this like could be king, could not be king, like, and she immediately like has sex with him. I think that's that's something that maybe tertiary SE could pull off. Uh, she's very inspirational. She obviously got Stannis under a spell and 
I'm not really sure. If Sam is probably ENTJ or something, I don't know. Um, but she could get him like under the spell. And she is also doing a bunch of FE things for an NI goal, just like Marjorie, except her goal is just like dumb, I guess. <laughs> or maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe the show's gonna end and it's gonna prove me wrong, but she's religious, so I guess religion takes the place of her NI goal. And I don't think she's kind of like SI about the religion either. Like, oh, this is the way it was. This is the way it's always going to be. She's kind of like scrutinizing the religion because she's scrutinizing all the other religions in this world. And because she actually like observes things with her SE, like she's like, I saw things in the fire. So she, uh, it's based on her experience and observations that she chooses her this religion over the other ones, not just because people told her that this was the way. So to me, that's like intuition over sensing. Um, I guess we didn't even talk about um, the weak function of the ENFJ, which is TI, and TI is all about like framework and consistency, like lo logical consistency. And there was a scene where like she like sacrificed the kid. <laughs> she sacrificed someone and um, Stannis didn't win the war, the battle anyway. And she's like, oh my gosh, maybe I was wrong about everything. And then she just kind of runs away. So kind of like not knowing how to deal with like logical inconsistency. Okay, so I only talked about four characters, but this video is also already like getting kind of long. So I might do like a part two if you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. And as always, thank you for watching.